I'm Richard Wee uh, from the bar. Uh, my question, two questions, direct straight to Tan Sri. First question, in your view, do you think Matthias Cheng was correctly charged under Sosma? That's the first question, which means, which, of course, he's a solicitor. Uh, and I'm speaking from as a lawyer. We do work every day. Uh, we, we, we defend our clients every day. We go to court. Amir and I, we do criminal work. We go to court every day. How can a lawyer be charged for representing his client? So my first question is that. And my second question, I'm sorry, I'm going to break rule. I'm actually going to ask something outside Sosma. I really would like to know, how are you? I really would like to know how are you. That's, uh, I will not give you my views at all because the matter is before the courts. And as a matter of policy, I do not make uh, my views on that. Okay? On the other issue how I, I am, I'm okay. I'm on dialysis three times a week. Um, I still got to do, read, I still do work. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not in the office. I do work like uh, looking after my grandchildren. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh yes, and sometimes entertaining my good friends around here. <laughs> or rather, they were entertaining me. <laughs> and uh, some other friends too, that, that's it. But, uh, well, I am functioning very well. I have no issues. But bear this in mind, when I was, uh, when I was uh, sitting there in the office too, I was already on dialysis, and I think I had some dealings with uh, the you know, president and past presidents even when I was in dialysis. So uh, I'm okay. You see me? I'm all right. Thank you. My name is Hazwani Short Nani from Sina Project. So I would like to shoot a question to Gani. What is your personal views regarding ISA, EO, and various related laws designated for detention without trial? Do you believe that the, the, that the acts, including SOSMA, is just and fair laws, or were you just doing your job, aka executing laws that was enforced? I act like any other ordinary lawyers uh, in the capacity of an AG. I give advice just like any other lawyers, and we take instructions from the client. Okay? And it is your parliament that pass your laws. Bear this in mind. I'm not responsible for electing your, your, your MPs. <laughs> you are. Okay? Whatever it is. But that is the case. You, your, you have your MPs, the, the laws are there, your MPs voted for it. But if you ask me whether it's unfair or not, I will say this to you again. So smart is needed. I don't go further than that. Eh? However, it is how you interpret and implement it. I think that is the question. There may be also be flaws in it. I'm fine. But as we all experience, laws will be amended to, uh, to, to take care of these things along the way. Thank you. This is Director to Tan Shri. Considering the fact that Poka, Pota, and Sosma has been used together to counter terrorism in Malaysia, from the Asia's Chamber perspective, is it necessary? From your opinion just now, I think you made it quite clear that the Sosma is a very good legislation on its own. If so, why do we need Pota and why do we need Poka to handle terrorism? The second question is, if you look at the recent case of Adi Nain Farizi, the alleged IS hacker, it was said that the public prosecutor requested for his arrest because there was an extradition order by the U.S. government. But he was arrested under SOSMA. Procedurally, is that acceptable? First of all, as a professional, I cannot comment on something that I do not know the details. I, I wouldn't be able to. And to make comments when I do not know the facts of the case, exactly what went on, would be wrong. However, on the first issue you raise, okay, whether they are, whether they need it, whether they need it or not. Let me put it this way: those the applications of those laws, uh, detention for investigation, are not within our purview. That is for the enforcement agencies to decide. We don't cross over to investigate. Eh? That is not of our business. They will have to put their mind as to what is fair or not and apply those laws. And that is their duty.
By the end of the day, what was the safeguard? Remember just now what I mentioned? Before the 28 days expire, they must refer to the public prosecutor. Then the public source, that is the safeguard. Only then it comes in. Otherwise, no public prosecutor has the right to disturb any investigations, none, as far as I'm concerned during my time. Okay? It has to be done that way. There has to be separation of powers. Thank you.